Are you working on your author career, but struggling to get that first book published? Does the goal of being an author seem too lofty? Or thoughts of having multiple books and making a full-time living are as fantastical as living in Cinderella's castle? Welcome to Discovered Wordsmiths, a podcast where aspiring authors can be heard. Join Steven Schneider as he finds and talks to authors you may not know, but authors that have gotten their foot on the author career path. Hear what they've done to get there and where they want to go now. Settle back. It's time for a bit of inspiration and advice. Come listen to today's Discovered Wordsmith. Welcome to episode 57 of Discovered Wordsmiths. Today I've got Zach Bohannon. He lives in Tennessee with his family and is a full-time writer of horror and dystopian sci-fi. I've known Zach for a couple years. Uh, in fact, I was being coached by him and Jay Thorne for a while. They partner on quite a few books, though they do their own also. Zach also is the co-author of The Three-Story Method, which we talk about and is something I love and would recommend to any writers out there. Um, he's got a lot to say about choices and working from home. And it's a very good talk. I'm glad he took the time to talk with me. Uh, I just recently saw him in Salem at one of the writer events that him and Jay run. So it's kind of nice that this is coming out right after that when he and I actually got to meet face to face for the first time. We've talked on the phone, we've talked on chat, but never face to face. And that's a very special thing to be able to do with someone you haven't met in face to face before, uh, especially as writers where we tend to. Uh, be very secluded. So it was a great talk. I was glad to get back to it because we recorded this a couple months ago. If you haven't checked out Zach's stuff, I've got some links in the show notes. Uh, I've been reading his Dead Body series, which he talks about, and I've been enjoying that immensely. So check it out, and here's Zach. Okay, well, Zach, thanks for taking a couple minutes to talk with me on the podcast today. Uh, it's nice to chat with you. I haven't talked to you for a while. Yeah, been too long. So I, I appreciate you having me on, Stephen. I really do. So what I'd like to know is a little bit, first of all, for the people that may not know you, tell us a little bit about you yourself. I've been uh, writing full-time since uh, 2017. Um, I published my first book in 2015, um, a, a novel called Empty Bodies. It's part of a six-book series. Always kind of wanted to write, I guess. I, I know a lot of people say that, but <laughs> I had several other creative endeavors and stuff. But yeah, I've, I've been I've been blessed enough to be able to do this full time since 2017, and uh, yeah, it's been it's been awesome. You said you had several other endeavors before this, so you weren't an immediate successful author right out of school or anything like that. No, nothing like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I spent when I say other creative endeavors, I spent most of my twenties. Uh, playing drums in a heavy metal band. So um, I did some touring and stuff like that. Um, just, I mean, not like anything crazy or super extensive, but uh, that was kind of my, uh, you know, I, I didn't do the college thing because I tried to do the band thing. <laughs> Got it. So, but, uh, but luckily everything worked out and I've still been able to have a really cool creative career. So you were doing the band thing, the drums, uh, and I'm sure there's probably a million other choices because you've got a family. So why did you decide to say, you know what, I'm going to start writing. I really want to do this. You know, it was always something I'd really like, I'd always wanted to uh, do a novel, just like so many people, uh, you know, I, I tried to start stuff several times and just never could uh, stick with it. And uh, I, I'd say the turning point that really kind of started to get me to the point where I felt like I could do it was back in 2012, while I was still working my, my full-time job. Um, that's kind of when I really started to get my entrepreneurial aspirations. I, I lost a hundred pounds in just over a year, um, nice. and and became a personal trainer. Was really going down that path. So I, I had that side hustle where I was I was training people in the morning and after work and stuff, and I was really hustling. And I really got a lot of that discipline and mentality from that. Well, at the same time. I'd started a blog kind of documenting my process of how I lost all this weight and did all this stuff. And the blog got a little bit of traction and I ended up writing a book, which is terrible. It's, I, I, I did it all the wrong way. Like it's, I didn't get an editor. I mean, it's terrible. I mean, it's not up and available anymore, um, but it was like part memoir and part like 
what I did to lose all my weight and stuff. So I had the experience of publishing and stuff. And I, and I was like, wow, I really do love to write. It, it was just that came out, I believe, in 2014. And then it was a little bit later that year when I decided, you know, I'm going to sit down and actually try to write a novel <laughs> and, and actually write fiction. And, and I felt at that point, because I had been spending the last couple of years, you know, hustling and, and, and trying to make, because tr- my goal was I wanted to own my own gym. And that was kind of what I really wanted to do. I was involved with a really good local gym here, really good friendship with the people who owned it. And I was thinking about fran- like opening another location of their gym and like being a, basically a franchise owner. And so I, I had all these business aspirations and stuff, and I was able to take that to to writing fiction. And, and that's, like I said, where I believe a lot of the discipline stuff came from was that whole process of losing all that weight, you know, all, all the disciplines and, and, and stuff that come with when you do something like that. I mean, a hundred pounds in a year is pretty crazy. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> so, yeah. So people can now, people can imagine what that was like. Um, unfortunately, I gained most of it back when I started writing, but <laughs> But but I've been able to get a lot of it back off. But uh, but yeah, I, I learned a lot from that whole period, um, and have been able to trans and was able to transform it into a writing career. So, so and I know you work with Jay Thorne. Uh, you guys have been partners on a lot of things. Um, how do you think things would have went for you differently if you hadn't hooked up with Jay? If maybe you were on your own, do you think that was a turning point for you? Also, would you still have done it? Just curious on your thoughts. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, getting hooked up with Jay has was I can tell you that I would not I don't think I would have had as much fun doing this as I have, mostly because some of the experiences I've been able to have through the partnership with him, specifically the different events we do for writers and and even the first thing we did that kind of went to that idea where we, you know, did the train trip with Lindsay Broker and Joanna Penn and been a week with them in New Orleans writing a book together. Like, if I wouldn't have met Jay, none of those experiences would have happened. Um, and and I don't, I honestly don't know where I would be. I mean, I was doing pretty well doing fiction on my own, but you know, you know, also, and and this is something Joanna says all the time. You know, you, that for most people, uh, you know, there are independent authors out there who are making a hundred percent of their income off fiction, but that's very rare. And so like, you know, she's always pushing our podcast and she'll email me and Jay and be like, Hey, what do you got? What else do you guys have going on? Like she's always pushing multiple revenue streams. And so like Jay has been, you know, together, we've really been able to build like other revenue streams that have helped. And that, that stuff helps. Like when you have a, a down month on your fiction royalties, you have other things you can lean on, lean on that, that can help out and stuff. Uh, and, and plus, like just from the writing side, you know, I, I've learned I learned so much working with Jay. You know, we we published uh, twelve novels together. Um, we've we've written an, a, a nonfiction book together. We've published several anthologies from all these different events. But just working with him creatively, like we've both learned so much from each other, and it you know it made me a better writer. You know, working with him. So things I would say things would be drastically different. I don't I don't know. Obviously, that's a hypothetical, so right, I can't. Right. Yeah, I can't sit here and say what would be different, but I, but I do know that I pr- I wouldn't be the same writer I am, and I I probably wouldn't be in the same position in my career as I am without Jay. Like is mentioned quite often, everybody's journey and path is different. Success is also defined differently for different people. I know you basically get to stay home with your daughter and help her see so her off to school and things like that. The then you can't really put a dollar amount on that. That's immensely, I don't even know how to put it myself. That That's so worthwhile for not only you, but her. Uh, I, I think people miss that point sometimes with making a choice of what you want to do for your career. Yeah, you're exactly right. I think success is relative. And I, you know, um, like I actually, I hate using that word because <laughs> it just, because like you just said, it means so it means different things to different people. Like my success, as you just said, is not solely tied to how much income I'm making. Like there's a lot of authors making way more money than I am. You know, I'm I'm in the position I'm in because my wife and I worked really hard to not have debt, you know. So I was able to quit my job with us being basically debt free besides a house 
And, you know, that helps out a lot. <laughs> you know, you don't need as much money coming in and you can take more risks when you don't, when you don't have to have as much money going out to banks and stuff like that. So, you know, we, we live a very, very lean lifestyle. I mean, um, I kind of consider myself a minimalist. I mean, I don't, as long as I have video games to play and books to read, I'm kind of good. <laughs> the moment I realized that all this was worth it was a couple year, a few years ago, my daughter had, it was like a father's, yeah, it was like a father's day thing at her daycare. I was one of like three dads that showed up to this thing, right. a class of like 12 kids. And there was like a couple kids who were crying and going to the office because their daddies weren't there. And I was like, how cool is this that like I control my life and my schedule that I am able to come up here and I don't have to miss things like this. Like I've never missed any of my daughter's things like that. The only thing I missed was when and it was in her kindergarten readiness class last year, they did a, a, this was before the pandemic, obviously they did a thing where you could, where they were inviting parents to come read to the class, which I obviously wanted to do as someone who loves reading and is a writer. But me and Jay were on one of our trips. Uh, <laughs> so um, I, I think that was when we were in Seattle or something. So I wasn't able to go. But other than that, like I'm able to go. And to me, that success, like I'm able to decide what I do when I do it. And to me, that is more. And obviously, there's money that plays into that. But again, because of the life me and my wife have set up together, like it's money is not as big of a concern you know, as it would be if we were trying to keep up with the Joneses or we had a bunch of debt and stuff like that. Right. So. Absolutely. And going to all the kids functions and activities was huge for me. And yeah. I'm, I'm not a, a full-time writer. I work from home and I kind of have a good flexible schedule. And I think people miss that. Plus I I've been doing a talk helping prepare parents to prepare their kids for the future work life. And it's exactly that. If I don't have to be living in a house close to where my work is. If I could live anywhere, well, then you can choose how much you want to spend for a house and property mm -hmm. and still have a job. And this is one avenue to be able to do that. And it's an enjoyable avenue. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it, def it definitely is. And that's one thing, too, that I have to... A lot of people want to go. Well, there's, a, I know there's a lot of people who want to go full time. And I'm sure there's people who are listening to this who are you know, very envious of the position I'm in. And and I, I try really hard not to take for granted what I do for a living. But one interesting thing that happens that I think a lot of people don't think about is like, it's a there's a big difference when you're doing this as a side hustle or doing it as something you just do for fun to when it becomes your job. <laughs> right. so, and and it is it, it is very enjoyable, but at the end of the day, this is still like my job, and it's something I kind of have to do every single day. That does kind of create a different relationship with the writing and creating art. And, and, um, but, but so like, that's one thing I've really had to work on is like reminding myself, like, no, you're really lucky that you're able to do this. And so like, don't try not to let, allow your, and, and I've had to put up barriers and stuff where I don't let myself get burned out and stuff and start feeling that way. And it's not just with writing it would have been the same if you'd been a drummer in a band and toured Absolutely. 200 days a year. Absolutely. Yeah. It doesn't uh, matter yeah. what it is. Like when your passion becomes your career, there is a, a different natural relationship that establishes with it. Right. So, and, sure. and I just I always remind myself, even on the darkest days when I really don't want to be doing anything that I'm doing, I remind myself that when I was right out of college, I was in a sweat factory working yeah. 12 hours a day, seven days a week. You know, I could have been doing that for my whole life. And no, I don't want that. I agree. And, and it's okay for, it's okay for writing or whatever, whatever your passion is. Like if you are making money for it on the side, it's okay for it to stay a side hustle. Not everyone has to go full time. You know, for me, I, I was at a job. I had a great job before this, like a really, I worked for an awesome company and uh, in the music industry and I had a really good job, but I had topped out. Like I wasn't the next position I could have gone up. My boss was only four or five years older than me and was not going anywhere. <laughs> so it's like, I had nowhere else to go. And so for me, it was like, okay, like I'm, I really think I can do this. So I'm going to, I'm going to do it, you know, but, but for not, not everybody, 
like there's some people who are totally content in their day job having health insurance, <laughs> you know, right. <laughs> which is the biggest thing that was a deterrent for me because my wife is a contracted employee and what she does. So I had our health insurance. So like, there's a lot of benefits to keeping a full-time gig and doing this on the side, you know, and I was still making really good money. I mean, to be honest with you, I was making more money then doing this as a side hustle and having that, you know, regular job than I am, than I am now, but I'm much happier now, <laughs> you know, cause yeah. And there's definitely still something, you know, when you balance out the scales, you don't have to pay for daycare. Mm -hmm. You don't have to drive and pay for the car maintenance and everything with all the extra miles driving back and forth to work. Yep. Uh, you know, there's, there's things that people don't account for sometimes good and bad, uh, on both sides. And I've been doing, I've been working from home for 20 some years. So I understand the benefits of not having to get out and drive in the snow and dark to get to work anymore. Yeah. I mean, just like how, like, I mean, you're, you're hundred percent right. And those are factors people don't think about. Like if I sat down and calculated just how much money I've saved in gas, right. Probably. <laughs> and, um, I, cause I used to have a 30 minute commute into work, you know, on, on, and with, with how bad, uh, Nashville traffic is, it's probably worse some days you know, with how bad Nashville traffic is, I had an hour, hour and a half long commute some days. And now like, I think I put gas in my tank like once a month now, you know, right. and, same and, here. Yeah. So like just that factor alone is, is yeah, those are, those are expenses that, you, you know, you often don't think about a lot. And a lot of people will go to lunch, like go out to lunch a lot when yes. they're at work and there's like all these things add up and it's like, wow, that, that really makes a big difference. Let me ask you this. You talked about uh, you wanted to go read to your daughter's class. So what would you have read? One of your zombie apocalypse books? <laughs> I don't think so. Not to the kids. No, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I honestly don't. I, I think, I don't remember if they had like a selection of books to read or if we're supposed to bring something or not. Um, I definitely would not have read one of my books. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for anybody listening, we should have talked about this too. Uh, what do you write? Tell us a little bit about those. Oh yeah. So. Um, I primarily write uh, post-apocalyptic uh, sci-fi slash horror slash thrillers. You know, I started out originally wanting to be like a horror author and I have a couple horror of horror novels out there, but um, you know, I quickly figured out through the marketing and stuff. I, I wrote this zombie book cause I was, I was thinking, okay, zombies, that's horror, right? I knew I could make that into a series and that took off and stuff. And I've always had an obsession with like the end of the world. I've always, I've always loved that that genre of stuff, video games, books, movies, whatever. I uh, that's what I write. Um, and I, I do some nonfiction as well. Um, you know, we mentioned Jay and I wrote Three Story Method, um, which is kind of our book that can help people. Like if you have an idea for a book, but you don't really know how to start, this is our process to get you from idea to draft. But uh, you know, we have a couple other nonfiction books kind of in the pipeline. But uh but yeah, mostly I just write post apoc different flavors of it you know jay and i have a, a vampire series together that's post apoc we have a alien series we have some stuff that um is just like far future broken society post-apocalyptic dystopian um and then i have two uh zombie series as well empty bodies and then dead south which is what i'm working on right now so which i'm reading the second book i i need to get that done for you <laughs> <laughs> right on i'm, I'm hopefully, hopefully you're enjoying it there's I felt a lot of pressure on that one because there was a pretty big space between those two books coming out. And, um, really? but, uh, yeah, yeah. Hopefully. And that, I think that's, that's interesting to say that because I think that's our mindset. Cause when I was younger, I'd get a book in a series and it'd be a year to two years before I'd see the second. Yeah. One. And now it's a couple months <laughs> in, in the indie world, you know, I mean, True. that's kind okay. of the, and I do think it's a little bit of a misconception because there's, there seems to be this idea that you can't have success if you're not rapid releasing as they call it. But that's like pe people find, find that in different ways. You know, like I know people who put out two books a year and are making six figures, but I know for me and what my readers are kind of used to, like there, it was a pretty big gap, a bigger gap than I wanted, but, uh, the book's still doing well. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm the, the third book's going to come out a lot sooner. Like I'm already almost halfway through drafting the th third book. So. Cool. And uh, just a comment, the book, uh, Three Story Method, I've read it. I've worked with Jay a little bit on a few stories, you know, focusing on that method. 
and what I really loved about it and what clicked with me was it wasn't overly complicated. It wasn't uh, something I had to really think and wrap my brain around. It made sense and it was very easy to get into. And I, I don't say that in any derogatory way at all. It was perfect in that. I think sometimes there's a few others out there. It's too complicated. You know, yeah. it's 20 different steps and, you know, level after level after level. Even the hero's journey is like what, 12 or 13 different, you know, parts to it. Yeah. You know, this is much more simple and it can be used very effectively. So I've really, I'm reading it for the second time and applying it more and more. Uh, and I think my stories have definitely improved because of that and using that. So I think. Well, yeah. Thank you, man. I'm glad you've enjoyed it. And I appreciate those kind words. You know, I think that. I mean, there's a lot of great books out there on, on craft, whether it's planning your book or whatever. I, I think that, you know, the, the big the big advantage we had with three story method that kind of gets lost is, you know, Jay spent 25 years in the classroom. And and I, I don't think you can undervalue the fact that he is a teacher. <laughs> and and a lot of people who write cr- craft books or or whatever, you know, you can use this analogy in a lot of ways. You know, there's some of some of the greatest athletes in the world are terrible coaches. You know, just because you right. can do something doesn't mean you can teach it. And and so you know, Jay Jay obviously ha- has that experience, and I think that that really plays in three story method, and is a big reason why it is. Uh, it, it's helped as many people as it has. So, and also, I'd probably throw in that both of you have written multiple books and had uh, books that have been really well received and successful. Books that haven't, you've increase your knowledge and your craft and your skill and you put that into the book it came after way too often i've seen craft books publishing books marketing books whatever and you go look and this guy has like one book out that's yeah. like three million <laughs> absr on amazon and they're like telling you how you can write a successful book it's like dude no you can't yeah yeah you're exactly right i mean and that's definitely something that i i look at you know, that was, that was a big reason, um, why Jay, you know, chose to do the book under his real name and not his pen name, or, or I'm sorry, to do it under his pen name instead of his real name. Right. Um, right. you know, cause he wanted people to come to the page and see that he'd written all these books. Um, and, and that, I, I do believe that does make a difference if you're, if you're showing like, Hey, that we've done this, you know, and I, I don't know how many books Jay and I have written between the two of us. I mean, it's probably I bet between the two of us, we've published 75 books or something. Wow. Um, probably something like that. Um, so yeah, there's definitely experience there and, uh, yeah. So, and, and like I said, Jay being a teacher is, is definitely a a big aspect of that as well. So let me ask this, uh, since you are a big video game guy, have you looked into or considered writing for video games or getting into that type of market? That is definitely something I want to do. Um, that is kind of, you know, I, I'm not a goal person. I'm not someone who like sets goals, but like that is an asp- career aspiration I have. Um, you know, I, I would like that more than doing a movie or something like that personally. Um, Jay and I did at one point talk to an indie developer about trying to possibly adapt one of our novels into a, a, like a, a, a indie game. And, uh, but that, that, those talks kind of fell through, but, uh, that is something I want to do. I haven't, I, I honestly haven't looked into it very much. Um, other, other than, you know, trying to set up that one meeting we had before that is something I want to do. I mean, right now I'm kind of just focused on writing novels, but I would like to be in a position where I could carve out some time and really look into like writing. Like I would love to write like a big game, <laughs> you know, like write the story for, for a big game. Cause that's where. That's where I get a lot of my story inspiration is, is I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm in the very early process of world building a story right now that I, I don't know when I'm really going to publish the, the biggest influences in that series are all video games. That's where I get a ton of my influence, especially in my genre, because in, in post-apocalyptic, <laughs> I think you can easily make the argument, the best stories being told in that genre are in video games. True. Um, very, very much. So and, and so, yeah, so that's definitely something I would love to do eventually is write a game. And that's interesting because you get a lot of video game people that say, oh, we took inspiration from these books we read. Yeah. You're kind of the opposite. I'm writing books inspired from the video games. So it, it's all, it's a different world. It's all meshing and coming, you know, stories everywhere, like you've said before. 
Yeah, the stories being told in that medium now, like in games, is pretty amazing. I mean, just games have basically, to me, they've become, I mean, they're better than most movies being put out. I mean, because movies are getting a little better, but movie Hollywood's been so stuck in the sequels and remakes and stuff. And these video game companies are telling very original stories. And now what's happening is a lot of the games are going to start getting adapted. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, that you, we've seen that happen recently. I mean, technically the Witcher was a book first and the game came off the book. And I, it, but you know, that, that really became popular with the game. Um, that's right. happening with the last of us with uncharted. I mean, there's a lot of, uh, it, it, we're going to see a lot more games be adapted to movies and TV shows. Cause that's, there's great storytelling going on. And I think it's going to be more games and the TV shows, which TV shows aren't what they used to be. <laughs> so, yeah. And I think movies, unfortunately, are taking a bit of a downside, but we've all discovered you can tell a much better story and adapt a TV show much better from a book rather than a movie most of the time. And people are loving it. People want the, the TV shows. Yeah, I mean, you can with a show, you can really take your time to tell a story compared to a movie. You know, with a movie, you have to really cram it in, and and with a show, you can really take the time to to tell a a long form story. And if you have a um, compelling enough hook uh, and and a, and good writing, then you can keep people uh, go, you know engaged for a very for a very long time. So right, and it's it's showing. And again, like you said, with the video games you know with the new systems out they've got so much power that just adding better graphics doesn't make it a better game anymore people want the stories and you know i heck my kids sit and watch uh cut scenes and playthroughs of games more than they play games it seems yeah <laughs> yeah it's it's funny it's funny how that that kind of works out but uh but yeah it's a it's an interesting time and I, and, and like you just said i think that the storytelling um, it's just going to get better. You know, I, I, I fortunate enough to where I was able to snag a PlayStation five a couple weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. They're very hard to find. Um, but you know, seeing games on there and seeing just how cinematic, um, they're able to be. And I, like, I'm really excited to see where it goes to see, you know, what, what kind of, what sort of games we're going to get over the next five, six years with these new systems. Yeah. And what type of stories come out of it and Absolutely. where they're getting those stories. That's, Definitely something to keep an eye on. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, Zach, I appreciate you taking some time to talk. And I should have warned you, I've been finding uh, the 10 minutes I thought these would be have ended up being a half hour. <laughs> that's okay. Um, <laughs> but you work from home, so that's good. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, I don't have anything else to be doing. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what Chris said. I'm talking to her later. And she said, oh, I'm good until my kid gets home from school. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's just kind of where I'm, I, you know, my... Uh, just trying to get as much stuff done as I can before she comes home. So, right. All right. Well, Zach, I appreciate it. Thank you for listening to discovered wordsmiths. Come back next week and listen to another author discuss the road they've traveled. And maybe sometime in the near future, it might be you.